Hi friends, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can paint a realistic looking lemon in watercolor and mostly using undertones and just playing with colors based on a color wheel. A full class can be found on Patreon, so it's www.patreon.com slash mariamodane. That's where I share uh, real-time recorded classes and also you'll find the reference image and a list of art supplies, a sketch, and many many tips. The first step is to wet the lemon. You don't want to paint it wet on dry. You actually want to paint it wet on wet for the smoothest effect and for soft transitions between the colors. Wetting the paper is actually very important because you don't want to do it for like a minute even. You want to do it for like three minutes, depending of course on like how big the object is. Now I'm starting with this yellow, shade of yellow, but I'm also grabbing tiny bit of green. Why am I doing that? Because I want to create different shades of yellow. So when you take a look at the lemon, when you hold a lemon in your hand, of course it's yellow, right? But as soon as you start turning it and from one area you'll notice the light is hitting it more and from the other area you'll see it's more shadowed, that's when you start noticing different shades of that yellow. So my tip number one is to mix the colors on the paper, not your palette because you want to show that there are different shades of yellow and which is why I'm actually using different shades of yellow. I blend them on the paper. Here I'm also uh, talking about like how to use a brush. I'm using here my long quill size 2 Sunbird which is my own line and then I quickly switch to a round brush size 8 Golden 2 which is my own line as well. These are softer brushes. Overall I suggest using softer brushes. It's easier to spread the paint without disturbing the paint in a way because if you use a stiffer brush it's very easy to lift the colors as you are placing the colors. Now for this part here I added blue, a shade of blue. Why did I do that? Because that part of the lemon has a highlight and of course there's also like some green in there but I was focusing on a highlight. That's why I wanted a little bit of blue. That highlight does not need to be just white. And then here is another shade of yellow because I want to show that this lemon is affected by light and shadows. So I'm changing the shade of the yellow <laughs> and I'll be mixing in other colors too. This is not just like raw sienna or some imidazolone yellow, uh, imidazolone lemon. Uh, the thing is that you don't need to have that many yellows. You can just work with one yellow and you can simply change the shade of that yellow by adding first of all a little bit of red and you can decide how much red because of course if you add too much red it will become orange or then red. Now here quickly I am also adding some green but the, the green is slightly blended with yellow which gives me an additional shade of green. So again you want to mix the colors on the paper and here in that area I actually want to stay away from the highlights because the highlights are important. I don't want to have a plain yellow. I don't want it to look flat. I want to create a dimension. So here I'm also starting to add blue and that's exactly why because I want to create dimension in my painting. So I need to work with light and shadow, staying away from the lightest areas and then the areas that are the darkest. That's when I need to add more color and play with colors. So work with the color wheel. So I'm going to give you a great tip. If you think of green, how green is created is by a mix of yellow and blue. This is why whenever I paint anything green, like leaves, I will use yellow and blue to change the shade of my green. I started adding here Van Dyke Brown on the left side because the lemon is shadowed, is much darker. Now I don't really need to use Van Dyke Brown and just FYI, if you want to create a shade of brown, all you need is actually red and green. When you blend those two together, there, there you go, there's your brown. In the past, when I was still learning how to paint with watercolors, 
I would spend too much time trying to figure out my color palette, trying to find the exact shade of that yellow there or this yellow here, just so it kind of like I have all these colors for every inch or centimeter of that lemon, the skin. Here I'm just adding some more Van Dyke brown, more darks, and you can simply add even red. You want to change the shade of that lemon and you want to keep applying the colors until basically you can't do it anymore and the paper will stay wet longer simply because you keep painting you keep applying the colors and you don't want to spend too much time on one area because then the other area will dry too fast so to answer a lot of your questions like i've gotten these questions before where you would ask me like how do i keep my paper wet so long uh, it's because I cruise around like I don't stay in one area for too long I move around and then I move around and I add more color and sometimes I just move the colors the ones that are already placed so I'm adding more and more colors until I can't do it anymore and here I'm starting to work on the leaf and the situation is pretty much the same starting with the mix or blend of yellow and green creating my own shades of green starting with the lightest shades that I can see first and I'll slowly start adding blue as well another thing which you can do when you see some nice veins there over the leaf you don't have to use masking fluid or white color or anything like that you can simply lift the colors now lifting wasn't easy for me when I first started painting with watercolors. It took time to figure this out and I'm here to tell you what it takes to lift. You basically need to wait until that shine from the paper goes away. So from the paint and water you need that shine to go away and then the paper starts to feel damp. That's when you want to start lifting the colors. On some papers it's hard to lift, it also depends from the pigments you're using. Some papers like cellulose papers, it's very easy to lift, even too easy because that's when you can't really add second layer. So I always recommend to paint on 100% cotton watercolor papers. If you would like to watch a full class how to paint this lemon with two layers, please join me on Patreon. It's www.patreon.com slash Maria Mojane, and I hope to see you there.